On this episode of the State of TMF, we're hitting the trail. The audit trail, that is. And our experts are leaving no stone unturned along the way as they dive into audit trail reviews, what they should contain, and how to present them to inspectors. The State of TMF is officially in session. Let's get into it. I want to thank everyone for joining us on our now seventh uh, State of TMF uh, podcast leaving no stone unturned, the TMFers Guide to Audit Trail uh, Review. Uh, As you can see, I am not your regular host, Oliver Pierce. Uh, My name is Aviv Luke Bell, and uh, I am replacing Oliver, who is on his way back from the ASQ conference uh, in uh, Denver, which is a a quality conference. Um, I'm going to kick things off. And of course, uh, one of the obvious questions that uh, comes up when we talk about uh, audit trails is, What is uh, an audit trail? And according to the uh, MHRA, and I'm going to read this off the MHRA website, uh, the audit trail is a form of metadata containing information associated with actions related to creation, modification, or deletion of GXP records. Now, um, pretty uh, easy to understand, but perhaps, uh, Donatella, you can give us uh, a little more uh, insight into exactly uh, what uh, the audit trail is. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much, Aviv. I think that, uh, yes, this is a very, you know, helpful definition uh, in terms of what is an audit trail. Uh, and I think that uh, if you ever look to any regulation or uh, any guidance, you will find different, let's say, approach and perspective of a definition of audit trail. But basically, this is an audit trail. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, what can better define an audit trail is uh, that the audit trail uh, is a uh, the storyteller or the storyteller. Uh, I think that uh, for those who are familiar with Montreal, uh, we like to define the TMF as the storyteller of the clinical trial. And basically the audit trail uh, of your TMF uh, will be the storyteller to tell you what is going on uh, in your TMF. Uh, so it was, I like to really say define uh, uh, the audit trail as the storyteller of the storyteller. I hope uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, give a better clarification of what uh, an audit trail is. But definitely, if you have a look to regulation and guidance, you will find lots of these uh, uh, very long and detailed uh, definition. That no, makes sense. It sounds like the audit, the, the audit trail is really the narrator uh, yeah. of, uh, of the story. And, you know, before we, we jump to the, the second slide, I want to remind our audience, of course, there is a question uh, and answer section. So if there's any questions that you want to put uh, to uh, Donatella, please feel free to uh, put that in the Q and A section, and we'll do our best uh, to address those either live uh, during today's podcast or uh, following um, today's uh, session. So I'm going to move on here, uh, Donatella, and you tell me if I'm on the right slides, uh, just to make sure that we're presenting the right thing. So uh, go ahead. No, I was meant to be to tell that definitely. When it comes to the trail, uh, again, there can be different definition if you have a look to guidance uh, and regulatory requirement, but there are some key components that definitely will appear in every definition, in every explanation of what an audit trail is. And we have the timestamps. So basically each entry in the audit trail is timestamped, which means that, you know, the date and the time of when the action, the event occurred. Uh, is very important and is tracked in the audit trail. Uh, The user identification, so the audit trail uh, identify who did uh, the action, who did the the event, so who is responsible for that particular action uh, track uh, in the audit trail. And this is to ensure more accountability. And then obviously uh, the action description. So in the audit trail, uh, we are going to verify and to see what is the action or the event that, that occur? For example, uh, a login uh, or maybe a system configuration or maybe a document that was uh, deleted. So we see exactly the action that took place uh, uh, in your TMF. Okay, that, that makes sense. So we have all of this data, all of this information. Um, I guess my next question would be, and I think a question a lot of, of us have is, how do we then use this uh, information? How do we make it so that we can gain active uh, intelligence from uh, an audit trail? Yeah, so I think that obviously we are here because uh, one of the major and now uh, very challenging regulatory requirement is uh, 
audit trail review. So it's not just sufficient to know what is an audit trail. It's not sufficient to have a TMF with an audit trail. We need to review this audit trail. And uh, what I see working with company is that majority of people doesn't really understand what does audit trail review mean. So what do I have to do? And uh, I think that the easiest way to, you know, to explain you what is an audit trail review is uh, to make a comparison with a very famous game, uh, Find the Intruder. Uh, you know, my daughter, she is uh, five years old and in September she will start uh, the elementary school. And one of the exercises that she is doing right now is, uh, you know, some games uh, with the teachers and this Find the Intruder. Uh, so basically here we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, some very, uh, say, some data, uh, but there is something that is... Uh, I would say not so equal to all the data. There is something that I noticed uh, it right away. I don't know. She noticed <laughs> <laughs> okay. that doesn't match, you know, with the overall picture. I would say no. So uh, maybe take a look, uh, and then maybe we can go to next slide to discover if there is something that again it's like an intruder in our overall view. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I, I I think facial hair is the one that is distinguishing between what we should have and, and the intruder. But I'll I'll leave that to you. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, body try review is really is like a game to find an intruder. I mean, you really need to detect that anomaly, that things that uh, is like an alert in your uh, uh, TMF management routine, and that you know give you a sign that something is uh, not uh, equal to the standard, is not compliant with your processes. Uh, so it's something very, you know, uh, important to do in your daily activities for TMF management, because it's so important that we obviously ensure that integrity. It's, uh, it's a pillar, I think, in a GCP compliance and in TMF to have uh, um, the, the ability to ensure that integrity. We need to provide data that are reliable. And so obviously, the audit trial review will help us to understand that if in those data there are any anomaly, anything that, uh, you know, was not done in compliance with the regulatory requirement or maybe with my protocol or with my study plan. So it's a really important tool that you can use uh, to support the data integrity of your clinical trial. Uh, it's a tool, uh, it's a way for regulatory compliance because uh, we will look, uh, we will see in the next slides uh, that uh, Definitely, all the competent authority are uh, asking for audit trail review. So basically, we need to implement an audit trail review process to be in compliance with those requirements. And it's a tool to support inspection readiness and quality assurance because we want to have our TMF inspection ready at any time and we want to ensure a very good story when it comes to uh, an inspector. So definitely, audit trail review is a, a methodology that can apply to our TMF to ensure quality and inspection readiness. And it's a way to mitigate risk. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, risk-based approach, uh, apply risk to TMF management. Definitely audit trail review is a step of that process because you can identify risk and you can mitigate that risk before an inspection occur. Uh, and uh, I think that also, you know, uh, support uh, transparency and accountability. Uh, one of the biggest uh, benefit, but also, let's say, uh, fear in moving to an ETMF is that definitely you've got more transparency. You, you can't hide anything else to an inspector because uh, they will know when you have upload a document, they will know if you uh, your document fail at QC. So there is a lot of transparency and only trail review definitely support this principle of transparency and accountability, which is again, uh, a regulatory requirement. And I think that uh, last but not least, uh, an audit trail review is also important to ensure a continuous improvement because uh, we want to, you know, we want to uh, support the quality and we need to verify every time that our processes are in, in, in compliance with regulatory requirement, uh, with our SOP, with our expectation. And so it's important to verify if there is uh, any gaps uh, uh, any anomaly in our processes, in our TMF, uh, that can cause a lack of quality. And so it can be, you know, taken as a source for continuous improvement uh, for our TMS uh, management. Okay. Yeah. And so for, for those that, you know, are listening to what you're saying and saying, well, you know, th this, this does seem like a very challenging 
uh, process of something, you know, that, that needs to be learned in order to, to put in place, um, you know, what would you say are, um, you know, some of them, the, you, you talked about in, uh, continuous improvement of, of the, the processes. Can you maybe step into that a little bit more? What are the most immediate things that we can feel from, from putting these processes in place? Yes, absolutely. So obviously when you identify, you know, some anomalies, uh, during uh, the audit trail review, what you can do is uh, absolutely to develop uh, immediately the corrective action that obviously will fix the issue and then develop the preventive action uh, that will support uh, that improvement, that uh, uh, improvement of the process that is needed to avoid that, you know, anomaly or deficiency to occur again in the future. Because at the end, this is, you know, the, the goal and the purpose of any quality check. You want to fix the issue, obviously, if you identify any gaps in your trial master file. But at the same time, you want to improve that process. You want to avoid that error, that mistake to occur again in the future. And so the outcome of the audit trail review will be the basis to understand where you can improve your process. Maybe there is a step that I need to better detail or maybe there is a missing step in my process that I need to develop, uh, or maybe I need to perform more QC on my TMF because, uh, you know, maybe it's a lack of QC that uh, lead to that anomaly. So definitely any data around the audit trail review will, will help you to understand how to improve uh, uh, your process. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I'll, I'll let you, Donatella, go on with the remainder of your, your presentation. Yes. Uh, uh, I think that, uh, you know, we can't uh, talk about audit trail review without thinking about uh, uh, regulatory requirement because uh, some of the, let's say, concern that I have when I work with some company is that, uh, oh, no, but it's not a required to, to review the audit trail. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's mandatory to have the audit trail, so a validated system that keep the audit trail of everything that, that happened, who did what, and so, but not to review it. And uh, no, it's not like that. It's really a regulatory requirement because uh, uh, just to give you some uh, some examples. So in the uh, very famous, probably all of the people that are on the line today know the very famous guidance uh, on TMF management of the 2018 uh, issue by EMA. They it was already you know in the past in 2018 that they were asked to review the audit trail for ETMF. So for those that, uh, you know, are, uh, don't see the slides, uh, here there is the paragraph uh, talking about quality of trial master file. And uh, they clearly state that area to consider during QC and review include the following. Obviously, all essential documents generated available in the TMF, documents filed in the appropriate location, documents added to the TMF in a timely manner, documents correctly indexed, document only accessible according to the assigned roles and permission and review of the audit trail for ETMF. So already in that guidance, we have this requirement. And if you then go to next slide, Aviv, please. We have a more recent guidance, always issued by EMA in 2023, about the use of a computerized system and electronic data and clinical trial. And there are you know, very detailed paragraph about audit trail review. And I, I want to read this um, very specific paragraph because it's clearly uh, uh, an indication of what you have to do when, when it comes to audit trail review. So procedure for risk-based trial specific audit trail review should be in place. So this is the very first requirement. You need a procedure, a process, an SOP or a working instruction that to, for, to perform a risk-based trial-specific audit trail. And performance of data review should be generally documented. So that review has to be documented. We know that if it's not documented, it that happens. So the evidence must be kept. Data review should focus on critical data. Know that not every data is created equal. So some aspect of the TMS will be more critical and higher risk than others. Data review should be proactive and ongoing review is expected unless justified. Manual review as well as review by the use of technology to facilitate the review of larger data sets should be considered. Data review can be used to, among others, identify missing data, detect signs of data manipulation, identify abnormal data outliers and data entered, 
at unexpected or inconsistent hours and dates. Individual data points, trial participants, sites, identify incorrect processing of data, uh, detect unauthorized accesses, detect device or system malfunction, and to detect if additional training is needed for trial participant size staff, etc. So it's a very, let's say, uh, complete paragraph about the requirement from EMA. And if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, please uh, just a, quick, a quick question, uh, Donatello. Yeah, so you, you say some organizations, you, you see this as an absolute requirement. Some organizations don't see it that way. They see it potentially as a recommendation. Can you elaborate a little bit on where that disconnect is in their understanding and interpretation of the guidelines as to why there is two different schools of thought on you know, how to approach audit trail review? Yes, absolutely. Good question. Because this is a, let's say, a, a very common, uh, uh, you know, discussion that we have with, with company because, uh, uh, for example, I just show you uh, two guidelines for EMA. Uh, now, for example, there is a, a, an FDA guidance issue in, in the past, uh, in 2016, that is already asking for a audit trail review. Uh, but, you know, the common, uh, let's say, um, question or uh, anyway comment that I receive is, uh, or, you know, but my trial is not run uh, in Europe. Uh, I just follow FDA rules, uh, so I don't care about this guidance because uh, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's just a European one. So basically, uh, it's not an FDA requirement. This is one of the biggest mistakes that, uh, you know, a company can do because uh, uh, if you have... Uh, maybe probably someone of you has just recently uh, joined the uh, FDA MHRA in Health Canada uh, Symposium or GCP Symposium last February, uh, where they clearly say that all these competent authority, FDA, MHRA, Health Canada, but you know also other competent authority are working uh, very jointly, are working closely, especially when it comes to GCP inspection. So basically, they exchange information, they exchange experience, you know, in uh, in TMF management, in GCP finding. So it's not just because uh, that guidance was issued by EMA that uh, okay, you are, I don't care about that because it's EMA and my study is a US based. Uh, you need really to have a comprehensive and more holistic approach to regulation because uh, competent authority and are talking to each other. Uh, again, they they share the finding, they share the experience. Uh, sometimes the FDA inspector they come and to assist an, an EMA inspect, inspection, and they take uh, you know notes uh, about the question, about what is checked. Uh, so don't let's say be uh, limited in terms of uh, what are the regulatory requirements, because these are also trends uh, that are uh, you know uh, issue in the in the environment. And if you wanna let's say have a more uh, uh, global uh, regulatory reference, uh, think about ICA GCP E6. And here I, I wanted to put uh, R3, the version R3, even if it's not uh, uh, effective, it's still a draft one. But just to make you understand that also the global uh, requirement is going in that direction. Audit trail now is something very important and crucial to ensure the data integrity in your clinical trial. So it's something that the competent authority more and more they are going to ask, they're going to verify, and maybe some guidelines will be more detailed than others. Some some uh, competent authorities still, still may be vogue or anyway, uh, very general in terms of requirement, but it's something that uh, uh, is under, let's say, the focus of all the competent authorities. So when an inspection comes, you really need to be ready. Okay, perfect, thank you. So, you know, we've done a good job uh, defining what an audit trail review is. We've done a good job uh, of explaining why it's a critical part of your process. We've also determined that, you know, it is a requirement as opposed to a recommendation. Um, so how do we now fold this into uh, the larger idea of TMF management? How does uh, exploring the audit trails really uh, impact um, your TMF management uh, strategy? Yes, perfect. Uh, um, as you said, uh, you know, audit trail obviously belongs to different uh, clinical trial system, uh, and one of these uh, is ETMF. So when it comes to audit trail review in ETMF, uh, this review can be used to verify 
several aspects of your TMF management. Uh, for example, user profile history. So what has changed for a particular user? You know, uh, I was active today, but maybe in one month I will be the commission because I will not be part of the study team anymore. So you can have uh, data and information related to the study team that have uh, access to the, your TMF. Uh, the time and the date a document was set to final, for example, because maybe you draft your document within the ETMF, it goes through a radio cycle and then it becomes final. So you've got the, the exact moment when that document will be final. Who participated in the life cycle of the document? Again, uh, probably you do a QC, maybe you do a review, uh, you do a signature uh, in the system. So you can exactly see who were the, the team members that participate in the life cycle of the document. What step a document went through uh, before being set to final? Uh, again, if you decide and develop a workflow within the system, uh, you can clearly see each step uh, the document uh, went uh, during this life cycle, during this workflow. So you will see that it was drafty and that review, and then it became final and then it became a PDF. So all this step will, will be clearly indicated in the audit trail. You will see any issue or type of issue associated with the document. If there is a query on a document, what type of query, if the document was rejected, the why it was rejected during a QC. So all this uh, quality issue information. You will see documents that were deleted. This is something that is like a, a sort of a red flag for an inspector. You know, what was deleted just because it was a duplicate or maybe because there were some confidentiality information or it was an unblinded document. So all this kind of very uh, important information. And you can also review access log, events log, queries. So you have really all these register, I would say, of information within uh, your TMF audit trail. And other things to consider uh, when it comes to TMF audit trail review definitely is that uh, you have to verify the event log. So it's important that your audit trail is exportable. I mean, you can extrapolate and download your audit trail uh, for your system, and it must be in a very easy and readable and understandable format for anyone. Because you know, if you download uh, an Excel spreadsheet where you can't even understand uh, you know the data within it. Uh, you can't review it. So it will be very challenging to demonstrate. So, so that, that's my question, Donatelle. You, yeah, you talked about readable and understandable, and I was on yeah. mute there for a moment. Um, how, you know, if, if your audit trail does come out in, in some sort of Excel export, how do you make it so that it is digestible and something that can be processed if, if it is not already? How do you interpret things that may be difficult to interpret in an audit trail? Yes, absolutely. So we will see some, let's say, uh, insight uh, uh, later, just to explain uh, how to uh, to make this uh, uh, this tool, uh, this uh, this uh, container more readable and understandable. Because, uh, as you said, uh, uh, if you think about a TMF for the train, uh, even if it is uh, made uh, uh, in the easiest way, obviously it will be a container of thousand and thousand and thousand and thousand and thousand of data. So definitely to find the famous intruder in, in those, uh, you know, thousand and thousand of data will be very challenging for everyone. So we will see later that uh, when you develop the process for audit trail review, to define the purpose of that review will be very crucial. And I would say fundamental to even, uh, you know, uh, define the format and define the report that you want to extrapolate uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from the system. To, to go back to the things to consider, uh, definitely uh, when you check the audit trail, it's very important to verify that uh, all the events uh, contain uh, the date, uh, the, the date uh, they occur, and the username uh, of uh, the person uh, responsible for that particular action. Uh, it's very important to check that there are, let's say, no holes in the sequence of events. So let's think that. Uh, I've got a draft document that must be through a review process before becoming final. I have to verify that that review step occurred. Uh, check any critical uh, operation, as I told you before, to delete a document that can uh, 
uh, detect, uh, let's say, the, the attention of uh, an inspection or inspector or an auditor. And so it's important uh, to understand uh, who perform uh, that deletion if it was uh, someone uh, with the right permission and if there is the justification of that deletion. Uh, you can check the user that have restricted permission. Uh, if you think about a study with the blinded and unblinded team, it's important that obviously uh, the team don't exchange uh, uh, access or don't have access to the wrong documentation. Uh, check uh, any uh, deleted document. So to verify if I have 100 deleted document, they are all, uh, let's say, retrievable in terms of uh, who did the deletion and why the deletion occur. Uh, make a selection of document uh, which uh, have a number version higher than 3.0 because, uh, you know, we know that uh, uh, inspector want to see the version history. And so it's important that uh, if there are multiple versions of a document, uh, also the previous version uh, are readable, are sexable, uh, and definitely there are, again, no holes uh, in the sequence uh, of the version. So in one word, check the document history. And I think that with the next slide, uh, we are going to uh, better answer uh, your question. Process-related question, yeah. So so we understand kind of what are all the components, what is the best way to execute? Uh, what are the different steps that we need to put in place to make sure that we can execute these reviews properly and get the results that we need? Yes, so I think that uh, we can define the process as a step-by-step -step process. Uh, very first one, obviously, define uh, what you have to review. You can review the TMF audit trail, you can review the TMF document uh, uh, audit trail. If you can go just back to the previous slide, Aviva. Oh, sorry. Just, uh, yes, just thank you. Just to give you the overall, uh, let's say, process. The first, uh, the second step will be define uh, when to review. The third one will be to define uh, how to document uh, that particular review. And the last one, which is, in my opinion, very critical, is how to define uh, the escalation pathway in case of issue and gaps. So now we can move uh, to the next slide to see uh, the very first step. So define uh, what to review. Uh, as, I, as we discussed before, uh, uh, the TMF of the trail is a big amount of data. It's a big amount uh, of information. So not all the TMF of the trail are created equal. You can. Uh, uh, maybe you want to check the single document or the trailer because you want to verify that the document went through the correct step of the workflow. Or maybe you want to uh, verify the events at TMF level. So basically you want to verify if the TMF uh, work in the right way, if uh, you know the sites uh, were, were added in the right way, the new country, the protocol amendment. So you verify this, let's say, high-level particular action and events that occur at, uh, in the system. Or maybe you want to verify your user access. So I think that when you extrapolate or when you analyze that particular report, you really need to understand the purpose of the review. Because uh, you can review the single document, uh, you can review uh, the entire TMS, uh, or you can have a uh, a look to the user access, which is, uh, you know, something very important to ensure the data integrity of your TMF. So based on that, obviously, uh, you, you can better define uh, what to extrapolate, uh, how to extrapolate, and how to make that report more readable with the right information, with only the information that you're looking for, uh, for that particular re report. So for example, uh, you can verify that the document owners have uploaded the document in a timely manner because of, uh, of the timeliness principle of TMF. You can verify that user roles change uh, maybe uh, not in the proper way during the study conduct. So, you know, I was uh, active and uh, as a CPM and then I became a CTA, maybe then a CRA. So all these uh, user profile during the study conduct. Uh, you can also verify the inactivity of a user profile. If I have a user that never access in one year to the ETMF, uh, mm, there's something wrong with that user. Uh, you can verify again the deletion of document. If in one day I delete 2,000 uh, uh, of documents, uh, probably there is an issue in that TMS. Uh, and you can verify also that, you know, if uh, you set up uh, a specific uh, review workflow for the documentation, uh, 
if there is any step that is missing in that workflow. So maybe there was something wrong with the system or maybe the workflow was not properly set up. So you can verify all these uh, uh, criteria and all this data. And based on that, you will develop uh, the report that you need uh, to verify. And, and just a, one quick question, and I want to be conscious of time, but, but how do we define with authority what needs to be reviewed. So there's multiple things. And as you said, not everything is created equal. There's different uh, uh, scenarios where uh, uh, that could justify different reviews. How do you kind of triage uh, what to review um, when reviewing the audit trail? So you have to review all these aspects. So basically you can't escape from uh, verify the document of the trail review but that will be part of your document you see. So it's something that obviously probably you will not do uh, on, a, on a quarterly basis, but whenever you check the single document, you verify also the audit trail of the document to verify that, uh, for example, a final version went through the exact uh, steps of the workflow. Uh, the user access is something that, for example, you perform more on a regular basis. So it can be on a quarterly basis or maybe every six months. It depends, uh, obviously, on the also turnover that you have internal to your company. If you know that your study team change uh, team members every three months, uh, probably you need to verify more frequently your user access. And in terms of TMF level, it depends uh, on your study design. If you have a TMF that, uh, you know, everything is very linear and standard, probably, again, the check can be reduced to one two times uh, per year, but if you have a, a TMF, uh, maybe an adaptive trial that uh, every three months uh, change uh, the IMP doser or the country or the side, so it's a very dynamic, let's say, situation, probably this check must be performed more frequently, maybe during the cross-check or the oversight uh, of your TMF uh, must be, let's say, uh, linked to an audit trail uh, review of the entire TMF. So. It depends definitely based on the situation that you are currently, but I think that all these three elements must be checked with different frequency, with different approach, but somehow this must be checked to ensure the data integrity that is required by the inspector. Yeah, and I think that ties into, you know, the step two is is understanding yeah. when to review certain things. And exactly. you, kind of answered, uh, you kind of answered that question, but I'll defer to you yeah, for a little exactly. bit more detail. No, exactly, because uh, mm, it's clear the regulatory requirement, uh, whenever guidance uh, or regulation are going to read, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, this audit trail review has to be done uh, on a regular basis. And, you know, regularly busy, what does it mean? It means uh, every day, it means every month, uh, uh, it's very, let's say, in general. Uh, and it's up to the sponsor and basically to the company to define the frequency of these activities. Uh, uh, and obviously, once you have defined uh, this frequency, you must uh, uh, written uh, this frequency in your SOP or in your working instruction. And I think that uh, for defining this frequency, you have to take into consideration the purpose uh, that we have just discussed. So if you are going to check a single document of the trailer or the entire TMF for the trailer or maybe the user access of the trailer and the risk. So I think we... I think that the risk is, uh, you know, the, the, the criteria that is guiding us uh, in, a, in our TMF management. And it's something that uh, can really help us to understand that does it make sense that I check my audit trade review every month? Uh, or maybe it's better, you know, to perform a, a better check every quarterly base, uh, you know, on, uh, of the update of my TMF, uh, of uh, all the events that occur in my TMF. So, if I don't, you know, think about the, the consequences that can have on your TMF, on the quality of your TMF, if you don't perform this review on a regular basis, or maybe just, uh, you know, I know some company that just say, okay, we will review the trail at the end of the trial. Oh my God. At the end of the trial, all those data, how can you also remediate to those uh, uh, issues and gaps if you identify those issues at the end of the trial? So define also the risk of not doing this activity uh, during the, the, the trial. So, so yes. it, it, it sounds clear that without proper process, um, none of what we're talking about can be uh, properly executed. And I think that ties in very well into your step three, um, which is really defining how 
uh, a document, uh, how to document the, the audit trail review. So perhaps a little bit of insight on, on exactly how we do that, how we document and, and uh, yes. we track everything we've done. Exactly. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, if you have understood that uh, audit trail review is a requirement, if you have understood that you have to develop and implement a process to review that audit trail, uh, and maybe you're going to do that. Uh, now it's time to document it. Otherwise, uh, you know, again, in case of inspection of uh, audit, uh, you will not have the evidence that you perform uh, this review. And again, uh, in terms of regulatory requirement, uh, uh, they say that this review can be manual uh, for using technology. Uh, so, you know, uh, what is important is uh, to have the evidence uh, that these activities, this responsibility was done. And obviously the evidence uh, then will be filled in your TMF uh, in Artifact 010101. So when it comes to, uh, let's say, a manual uh, evidence of uh, this audit trail review, Probably what we can suggest is to develop a checklist or a report template that you can use every time that you perform this review. And it can be very easy, very basic. We, you know, just for example, if you are doing an audit trail review to verify uh, who accessed the TMS, uh, if uh, the access uh, was done with the right permission, with the right role, uh, you can just, you know, add a column in your report, say, if there was any unauthorized access uh, uh, observed, uh, yes or no. So something very easy, but that uh, report, that checklist uh, will really give the evidence that you did uh, you did your job. I mean, you did your responsibility. Okay, so you, we, I, I've done my job. I've done the uh, the review of the, the audit trail. I have all of this information. How do I then take that information and escalate and uh, put some of the changes that need to be done into uh, practice? Yeah, I think, Aviv, that this uh, step four uh, is definitely the most uh, critical one because uh, uh, probably everyone on this call has understood, okay, I develop a process, uh, I do my review, and I find the issue, I find the intruder. Well, the problem is that uh, what does it happen uh, when you find the intruder? So it will be very important that you have uh, a communication process in place which also means to have, you know, the visualization of the data of the outcome of your audit trail review, because, uh, you know, it can be challenging for someone that is not used to uh, do an audit trail review to receive a, a report with all this data. And probably this person will not understand, uh, okay, what is the message of this, uh, you know, uh, long list uh, register of data with the, uh, you know, time and date uh, action, uh, what do you mean? So probably it's also the communication with the, I don't know, PowerPoint slides, uh, dashboard, uh, uh, graphs, uh, something that can send the message uh, of the issue that you identify. And it's important to identify the relevant stakeholders. So to involve, uh, uh, if not maybe just the study team, maybe there are other uh, like other teams, other functions, like for example, the quality assurance of your company. Uh, it's important to develop a root cause analysis. So. Okay, I have identified the issue, the deficiency, the anomaly, but why that anomaly is there? Uh, why it's just, you know, a human error, it's a system error. Uh, what is what is there uh, behind that uh, anomaly? Uh, it's important to develop uh, an impact assessment. So uh, it's the deletion of uh, 20 document uh, without a justification, a high risk for my company, or maybe not. Uh, so do an impact assessment of what happened. Is uh, the unauthorized access of a CTA to a study where she doesn't uh, work uh, a risk or not? So do this uh, uh, evaluation internally. Uh, and develop a CAPA plan, obviously, because uh, you have the issue, so you need to fix the issue with a corrective and immediate action, and you need to prevent uh, that issue to occur again. So maybe you need to update your SOP on user access management because you realize that people with the wrong access and permission access the system or access the wrong study. So probably you need to redefine and redesign your process. And maybe, who knows, you can even evaluate uh, uh, to close the site to stop the study if you identify big anomalies that can uh, 
uh, cause, uh, you know, bad consequences on the data integrity of your TMF. So all these evaluation must be done once you have, let's say, uh, identified the issue after the audit trail review. Okay. So before we move on to the next slide, you know, we, we, we've defined what the, the most ideal steps are for, for putting this in place. Where do you see as the, the failure point for a lot of organizations that are trying to uh, implement a, a more defined uh, audit uh, review um, uh, process? Where do you see things breaking down uh, most often for organizations? So very often, Aviv, what, what we see with uh, with company is uh, that when they develop, for example, the TMF QC or TMF oversight SOP, I mean, uh, uh, the, the the process to verify the quality of your TMF, uh, audit trail review is not included. Uh, so I think that the very big gap at the beginning of this uh, requirement is that uh, company are not yet ready to include this uh, step of the process within their process. Uh, within their <clears throat> SOP or work instruction. And this is the very first and very common scenario. And the second scenario is, uh, yes, maybe they know that they do to develop and implement this audit trail review, but they really don't know how. So they don't know what to download. They don't know how to download. They don't know, they don't know, you know how to track this review and uh, how to document. So definitely they need guidance in uh, developing the process, you know, doing some uh, example with them, try to uh, educate them to see that something is uh, an anomaly rather than something is uh, the standard process that you can escape, uh, is to educate them that, uh, again, some some data are not relevant for the uh, implementation of an audit trail review. Some other are very relevant. So I think that the uh, I would say that the, the challenge that they are facing is the same that companies are facing to implement their space approach. Uh, if, well, we can say that there are the two scenarios. People in company that they don't know that it's a requirement or maybe they you know just uh, try to escape for the moment about this requirement. And they, the, <laughs> that's, they know that it's a requirement, but they really don't know where to start. And so... At the end, uh, it's really, you know, uh, a matter of uh, try to help them uh, to develop this process that can be definitely very specific and unique because, uh, uh, you know, it depends uh, on the design of your trial, uh, on the uh, organizational model that you have. Uh, so it's something very specific. And at the end of the day, we don't have, uh, you know, standard approach uh, uh, guided by the industry or by the, the regulatory requirement. They just say... We want to see your audit trail review uh, process in place that must be written, done, and documented. This is the requirement. All the rest, how you do that, you know, maybe with the help of uh, uh, a magic uh, box or something like that, up to you. But but it definitely sounds like, you know, uh, the, the two uh, criteria are for the organization to reframe how they look at um, audit trail reviews from a nice to do to a must do. And I think on top of that, it's also important for the organization to be committed and investment uh, invested in making this part of um, their uh, process. Um, so yeah, exactly. If you, I don't know, again, I don't know if uh, some of the people on the line at the chat who attend the symposium, uh, the GCP symposium last February, but you know, there was a uh, an entire session or even two that talk about uh, all the issue identified during inspection uh, through audit trail review. So and if you don't perform this review, the inspector will do, and they will find the uh, issue and gaps that probably you were not even thinking about if you never- and Are you able to give any examples of some of the things that may not uh, arise in a standard uh, review that will only arise from a uh, audit trail review. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of examples. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if you, please, if you ever look to those to that symposium, there will be real example for real company. But at the end, obviously, they realized that there were data that were no, I will not say falsified, but you know, manipulated. There was no real, you know, um, 
information about the user access. For example, there were uh, user access at late in the night, which is, uh, I mean, if you start to enter documents at midnight, probably there is a problem with you or with your organization because, uh, you know, uh, there are some, uh, there are lo so many, let's say, data within the audit trail that really can help you to understand uh, if everything is going wrong, it's going uh, uh, right uh, in compliance with the requirement, in compliance with your process, or if there is something that is uh, an anomaly, okay? if there is uh, an intruder, something that, uh, you know, uh, should not happen. Uh, for example, if you think again, if, uh, to blind and unblind study, I think uh, during the entire RTMS uh, life cycle is important to keep, uh, uh, you know, uh, these uh, uh, two groups separated. Uh, so it's important to verify that uh, for any reason, maybe even for a system uh, error, anyone can have access to unblinded document. So uh, it's something that you can check uh, very easily through an audit trail. And it's something that you, you know, can ensure at the end of the trial, yes, uh, the user access, the right documents for the entire TMF. So the unblinded was not uh, uh, corrupt. Yeah, I think ultimately whatever gives you more actionable intelligence uh, is going to be an asset, both from a process perspective as well as ultimately from a financial perspective. And the less you can figure out on your own before you have an auditor or inspector uh, bring it up is always uh, a, uh, a nice asset to have. I want to transition to uh, what is probably a, a burning topic, which is uh, AI uh, for uh, audit trails. I, I think everyone on this planet has been hearing the words uh, AI uh, ad nauseum, but perhaps the data tell us share a little insight into how uh, AI is going to impact uh, how we uh, move forward with audit trail reviews. Yes. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, I think AI, obviously, it's a very hot topic uh, in the environment, uh, in the entire world. I you say yes. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, AI is very uh, common when it comes to TMF. We think about, uh, oh, yes, the AI that we help me to index uh, automatically all the documents because lots of people uh, consider boring, you know, to upload a document, to apply the metadata. So to have someone that can do that for you so you can focus on other activities of TMF uh, is definitely a benefit. Uh, but I think that uh, AI can definitely help in something like audit trail review, because uh, again, we discuss about the fact that this is a challenge to, to review that far amount of uh, data, uh, you know, thousands of data sometimes. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, like a sort of, okay, I close everything in, I close in my room uh, with this report on my desktop and I try to find the intruder, but it can take uh, hours and times and days uh, to do something like that. So if you can have a, a tool, a technological tool that can detect immediately an anomaly. So, you know, if you say, okay, uh, I am going to train the, my, my AI to tell, to verify that uh, all the document must go through a review step, or let's say two review step. And so please detect any document in my TMF that, uh, didn't go through our review step, but I mean, uh, it will be so easy. It will be so fast. I mean, you will have uh, already, I mean, you will um, skip, let's say, the boring step of checking on this aspect and you will have the data. So AI will help you because uh, they, AI will do the, the boring part and you will have the funny part of, okay, I've got the data. So now are these good data in my hands uh, because they say that uh, Yes, my TMF is special ready. I have no compliance. I have no issue. Or maybe, no, this data confirms it that I have an issue. I have a gap in my process. I have a gap in my user access. And so now I have to define a, a strategy, a corrective action, and a preventive action and try to involve other stakeholders about these gaps. So I think that definitely AI will not replace, uh, you know, the person in charge of doing a QC or a review, but it will definitely support this review because uh, AI will be able to check uh, more documents than a human being, obviously, and we immediately give you, or if not immediately, in a shorter term, uh, the data that you need. Uh, so I think that, again, uh, 
Uh, yes, it would be very helpful to have AI to index uh, document and apply metadata automatically, but also the trail review, I think that can be something where uh, an AI intelligence can help us uh, uh, to improve the outcome. So clearly AI is just one of the three pillars. You, you need to have the right people in place. You need to have the right processes in place. And only then can we really uh, maximize the output of, uh, of AI. Indeed. Yeah, exactly. And, and Donatella, uh, I know we're, we're uh, running out of time here. Any closing thoughts on uh, uh, the audit trail review that you want to share with our, uh, our listeners and viewers uh, today? Develop a process, an SOP for the trail review, please. <laughs> and don't forget to develop that process. I know it will be challenging, uh, but believe me that, uh, you know, it will be really helpful uh, to detect uh, those issues before an inspector comes. So don't be afraid. Probably the very first time that we'll do the review, it will not be perfect. Uh, you can fix always and improve your process, but start to do this, uh, this step uh, uh, to improve the quality of your TMS. It's uh, really important. All right, so just get started and uh, optimize and uh, pivot as you as you move forward, I think, is, is the uh, overall message. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, Donatella, that has been uh, an extremely uh, informative uh, session. Thank you, uh, everyone, for um, listening. I do want to remind our viewers that we have now opened uh, registration for uh, TMF Week. This is now going in our fifth year of the TMF week, which is the largest uh, online TMF conference uh, on the planet, if not the galaxy. Um, so the registration uh, starts uh, now. It's going to be held between uh, June 10th and the 14th. And we are giving a, a free pass away um, to the uh, CDISC US TMF uh, interchange. Um, so if you like to play golf uh, and learn about TMF, this is really a great opportunity uh, for you. And just a final note before I let everyone get back to their day, uh, on Wednesday, June 12th, we are going to uh, be providing everyone with what we like to call our bonus uh, episode uh, for season two. And that's going to be happening uh, during TMF week. So something uh, that you surely do not want to miss uh, moving forward. And uh, last but not least, don't worry, this is not our last podcast. We are going to be coming back. Season three is uh, well in the works and uh, you're going to be hearing from us uh, in the summer. So uh, again, thank you everyone. And it's been uh, an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Donatella. We really appreciate thank it. Thanks to you, Aviv, and thanks everyone for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The State of TMF. If you liked today's episode, hit the subscribe button, view the full episode with video on YouTube. And follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook to see the sometimes entertaining and always resourceful content we post every single day. See you in May for episode eight.